Welcome to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, brought to you by Pilma. This podcast helps lead lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Here is your legal marketing expert and host, Ken Hardison. Hello, this is Ken Hardison, and welcome to another episode of Grow Your Law Firm. Today, I want to talk about how the power uh, of adding a book to your marketing arsenal can really help you get more cases. Uh, so, one of my best grassroots marketing ploys or tactics when I was practicing was books. I had one on car wrecks. I had one on motorcycle accidents. I had one on trucking wrecks. I had one on workers' comp. I had one on social security disability. I had one on nursing home abuse. And I even had one on how to handle your own property damage. So why did I write so many books? Because they position you as an expert. It brings correct credibility and celebrity power. It brings you quality referrals. It helps you build a list of future prospects to market to until they get in an accident. It attracts and generates leads. It can be used as a lead magnet. So. One of the things I know, and I've taught for years and years, is that people hire lawyers they know, like, and trust. A book helps people to get to know you, trust you, and like you because you've given them information. You can put in your little story about why you became a lawyer or whatever in your book. Uh, And it stands you out from the crowd. What I'm saying is you've got to have something. There's so much out there, so much clutter. Why should they hire you? What makes you different? A book can be that thing. You know, it really can. So the big question I get, well, how do I leverage these books? Well, let me, I got a list of about nine here. And uh, one of them, you can put them on your website as a website lead magnet where they can just download them. Uh, And they got to give you their email. And then you can start marketing to them or send them your digital newsletter or send them your quarterly, uh, you know, email blast or however you're going to do it. You can also use it as a lead magnet on social media to get people, get your name out there. You can use them for referrals and people say, how can you use a book for referrals? So it's just this clear. What you want to do is every time you sign up a new client, you give them two or three of your books and you say, listen, when somebody, when you see somebody has been hurt, uh, you know, in a car wreck or whatever, give them this book and tell them, this is the lawyer I use. Okay, this does two things. It gives that person an easy way to break the ice and and make a referral because sometimes they want to, they just don't know how to do it. And then number two is when that person gets that book, not only have they got a referral, they've got this guy or girl must really know what they're doing because they wrote a book on this. And and let's be truthful. Probably over 50% of people will never read the book. But That's not the issue. That's not the reason you're doing the book. You're doing the book to create credibility and and, and authority. And just the fact that you wrote the book, whether they read or not, they're going to more likely call you than not. We also used to give them out at festivals. We did a lot. We did six or seven festivals every year uh, with the tent and everything. And it was really a good lead magnet. We give them out. People take them home. They're not like business cards. They're not going to throw them away. So they got long shelf value. And then this is something that we did. And and my law firm that I sold back in 2010 is still doing it today. We put them in doctor's offices, the car wreck ones and the workers' comp ones and the social security ones, um, at pain clinics, uh, whatever doctor would let us. And we'd put them there, and then we would go back and refill them. And so when people sitting there in the waiting room uh, at a chiropractor's office, a pain clinic office, physical therapy's office, they might pick, if they've been in a wreck or whatever and they see the book and you've got a good title, uh, then they're going to uh, pick it up. If they don't read it then, they'll take it home. And uh, it works. I mean, to, to this day, my law firm has a full-time person that goes around and resupplies these books in 20 counties in North Carolina. Uh, so I know they work because my old partner, if it didn't work, he would not be doing it, I can promise you. Um, so 
when you're speaking, like if you're going to speak at some group, uh, it's also a good thing to give out instead of a business card. Uh, like if you're going to speak to the Koalas Club, or you're going to speak uh, to whatever group, some nonprofit, give the book away. And then this is something that I did with Social Security, and I know we got some other lawyers doing it with PI and some of our masterminds at Pilma, is do an infomercial. And basically you get, um, you get uh, a professional to interview you about your book and you give away the book. And there's some little trick, little uh, tips that you need to know when you do this. You want to have it going on, on the banner the whole time. Call this free recording. And then they let them leave their name and address and then you mail them the book. And the reason you want recording because when we when we put recording versus just call the office, uh, we doubled the calls and they're giving you the information. And then we created a, a drip campaign uh, with snail mail and different other reports and, and swag and would mail it out to them. And we were getting social security cases for under $200 a piece, uh, which at the time, uh, I was buying leads and the, the cost was around $400. So I was getting like half, half cost. So this is the way to do it. The infomercials don't cost that much to put on TV. You'd be surprised. Uh, you can put them on broadcast TV in a large market for a couple thousand dollars uh, in a small market. Uh, I did them in Myrtle Beach for four or $500 on Saturday, Sunday morning, ABC, CBS, Fox, whatever. Um, you can also use them as a shock and all follow-up package on somebody that's a fence sitter and they try and decide whether or not to hire you with all your other stuff you send them. Send them the book. That'll impress them. And then you can also take the content from the book and repurpose it in blogs, social media, different things like that. So the key to this book is it doesn't need to be a war and peace. Mine were always under 60 pages. It was written on the eighth grade level. Uh, and and the deal was it was we did we we had it where you could buy it on Amazon, but never nobody wanted to buy that book. Well, we weren't trying to make money selling that book. That book had other purposes of the nine things I just told you. That's how we use that book. So the big question I have all the time is, well, how do I write a book? I don't have time or whatever. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, you can try to do it yourself. At Pilma.org, uh, we have a, 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 a product that helps you, shows you how to get the Library of Congress number, barcodes, uh, how to write the book, how to get it self-published, the whole deal. Uh, you've got the paperbackexpert.com, uh, Michael DeLon, he does a lot of this stuff. You can just put in Ghostwriter or whatever and, and, and Google that. And then what a lot of our Pilma members are doing, is we have, I licensed the books that I did and we edited them for you. We give you a 50 years license. Uh, and so it becomes your book and it's market exclusive. Uh, and so we got them for different areas of practice, like the ones that I told you about earlier. But uh, this is not a pitch. I'm just telling you, there's, these are the three or four ways I know of to get it done. I'm sure there's other ways. Uh, what I have found that lawyers try to do it themselves, uh, they take a year or two, whereas like with, with paperback, probably take you six months, with film it, probably take you 90 days. Uh, but it just depends. So, this, I think, is something you'll be looking at for this year. Uh, it'll be one of your uh, projects to help you get more people, get more cases. As the market gets more saturated, you've got to have a way to stand out. You got to have a different way to reach people. And you can use this on social media. It's a great way to do it. You can do videos about it. Uh, it's just TV commercials, everything. So uh, this is our podcast for this week. Uh, any of y'all that have not signed up for the, uh, our Pilma Summit, um, in May 16th through the 18th in uh, Ritz-Carlton at uh, beautiful New Orleans. Uh, I urge you to do so. Uh, things just like this are gonna be talked about. Uh, we're gonna have an expert panel on social media. We've got uh, 
one of the best CEOs in the in the country uh, that's going to be speaking. Uh, we've got a bunch of lawyers there and a bunch of experts on not just marketing, but managing how to hire people, how to onboard people. Uh, and I'm going to be talking myself about uh, how to handle how to handle your money, how to, how to keep your uh, how to increase your profits, your bottom line. Uh, I'm also going to be talking about the five trends that are going to be affecting law firms in the in the next. Uh, one to three years and what to do about it. It's going to be a, a struggle for people. So these are the type of things we want to talk about there. So anyway, I uh, hope this has helped. And until next time, this is Ken Hardison dedicated to your success. You have been listening to the Grow Your Law Firm podcast, the podcast that leads lawyers to more growth, profit, and freedom. Go to growyourlawfirm.com to find more ways to market and manage your law firm. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcasts.